Tonight, the state's road toll rise is following a crash at Cummins. And GFG's relationship with wireless steelworks contractors back in the spotlight. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. A 19-year-old woman has died after her car collided with a tree near Cummins this morning. Major crash investigators have flown to the scene, trying to determine what happened. Nathan Regter has more. The crash occurred here on Warra Road, just 11 kilometres out from Cummins, just before 7 this morning. Passing motorists contacted emergency services who rushed to the scene. But it was too late. The 19-year-old woman was killed instantly. Her car wrapped around the tree. The collision was reported to us at about 6.30 this morning. Uh, it involved a single car with a single occupant. Unfortunately, the occupant, a young girl, was found deceased at the scene. The impact leaving the Toyota Ute barely recognisable. It's understood the crash happened just outside the teenager's family home. Tragically, it's understood the family had previously lost a loved one on this same stretch. If that's true, then it's a, a, a huge disaster for the family. You know, your, your heart has to go out to them, I think. Major crash investigators flew in from Adelaide and spent several hours examining the scene this afternoon, trying to piece together just how this tragedy unfolded. I imagine their investigation will take some time to complete and, and possibly once that's completed we'll have some further info. The woman's death brings South Australia's road toll to 66 compared to 77 this time last year. The road has been closed for several hours with traffic being diverted around the scene. South Australian Senator Rex Patrick has criticised the owners of the wireless steelworks for allegedly owing around $1 million to local small businesses. GFG confirmed they are aware of some issues, but say most are paid within 30 days. An ongoing issue Senator Rex Patrick says is causing great distress. I've been to Wyla on a number of occasions over the last couple of years and been engaging in small to medium uh, businesses and there has been for a long time uh, late payments coming from GFG. Senator Patrick telling the Senate the late payments to local suppliers add up to more than one million dollars. With the city's small businesses already struggling to stay afloat during the coronavirus pandemic, he's calling for change. I support what Sanjeev Gupta is trying to do in Waila, but I want everyone to be winners. I want the small businesses to be a winner. In a statement, GFG says it apologises for the late payments. However, it insists it's paying its contractors in full, most being paid within 30 days of the due date. But small businesses aren't feeling like winners. Senator Rex Patrick says they feel they're being treated the same way they were under the management of the previous steelworks owner, Arium. The government has introduced a bill that requires companies with a turnover of more than $100 million uh, to report if they are paying late. GFG says it understands the pressure late payments puts on its suppliers, but remains confident both can work together to secure Wyala's future. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Police are investigating the cause of a house fire in Wyala yesterday afternoon. Emergency services were called to a property in Bastion Crescent at around 4.30. The occupants were home, with initial concerns one person was unaccounted for. However, searchers found no one inside. Firefighters were able to contain it to a bedroom and hallway within 15 minutes. Damage is estimated at around $50,000. A 30-year-old man has lost his licence following reports of a car doing burnouts in Maitland Sunday morning. Just before four, patrols attended a Wardang Avenue address. Patrols located the motorist, allegedly sleeping in the vehicle with the motor still running. Police allege the Port Victoria man recorded a blood alcohol reading of 0.193. He was reported for drink driving and will appear in court at a later date. Experienced Port Lincoln pilots say they are disappointed they weren't asked to help search for missing sailors Derek Robinson and Tony Higgins. It comes as rescue operations enter a fourth day, with hopes of finding the pair alive slowly fading. Day four and the desperate search continues, aircraft scouring Air Peninsula's rugged coastline for any sign of survival. 
but a group of experienced pilots in Port Lincoln say they should have been called in. We can be there quicker, we have local knowledge and uh, expertise with the uh, spotting crew and the uh, pilots. Uh, and airplanes can stay on station for you know, up to eight hours in the day. Kevin Warren has been involved in dozens of search and rescues over the past three decades. He says local pilots are trained in tuna spotting and could have provided local knowledge. What appears to be common sense uh, seems to have disappeared now and uh, they drag airplanes in for a localised search from places as far away as, as Perth and uh, Melbourne. So far, more than 100,000 kilometres has been searched. That's one and a half times the size of Tasmania. Father of three, Derek Robinson and Tony Higgins, haven't been heard from since last Friday. Nearly a week on, AMSA have called off their search while police make one last attempt. That search will complete at around about 7 o'clock tonight. And the decision has been made that if that search yields no further information, that we will also suspend any further search activity. Nathan Regter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Spencer Golf residents encouraged to apply for a dental traineeship program and Broken Hill Council looking to transform this city centre. Welcome back. SA Health is calling on Spencer Golf residents with a passion for health to apply for this year's 12-month dental assistant traineeship. Current students say it's a unique opportunity to learn while on the job. Hard at work, Lauren Carr says this traineeship has been a rewarding experience. It's been really hands-on and really, really good learning experience. There's so much to learn and um, it's really interesting. The traineeship involves working very closely with dental operators and the clients. Originally wanting to work in the medical field, Lauren thought she would try a pathway course into dentistry. We offer approximately 30 full-time dental assistant traineeships each year. Now undertaking training through SA Dental in Port Lincoln, she says the experience she's gained has been invaluable. Our clinic's based up at the Port Lincoln Hospital, so that's been really good being in a clinical environment where you can learn all the infection control and all those different types of things. With only four months left to go, Lauren is encouraging other rural students to apply. The 12-month program incorporates on-the-job training while undertaking a dental assistant certificate through TAFE SA. I really recommend the traineeship to anyone looking for a really solid, really interesting job. Anyone coming out of school looking for a gap year thing is also really, really good. More information is listed on the SA Health website. Applications close September 18. Sophia Contagonis, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hill CBD looks set for an upgrade, with local council commissioning a design master plan. The project will focus on a number of different aspects to improve the vibrancy of the area. A heritage town looking towards the future. Broken Hill City Council announcing plans to improve the area around the city's main street, partnering with a South Australian-based architectural team. Taylor Cullity Lethleen, or TCL, from Adelaide. They've done a, a fair bit of work um, in and around Adelaide, uh, along North Terrace and uh, at the airport there, and also in Auckland and Western Australia, I think. So, yeah, very experienced there. Their task is to come up with a central business district master plan, revamping and modernising parts of the historic area. Increased shade, seating and wayfinding among the ideas that will be considered. A few of the things we're looking at for the main street would be um, you know, some new lighting, some trees, sort of soften it with a bit of greenery and also have some, some banners along there so that we can promote things that are happening in town. The announcement comes just days after Council said it would be installing a pop-up arboretum near the art gallery. Meanwhile, locals may notice some new items along the main street with smart bins and new lighting now installed. We think it's exciting and it's probably overdue as well. I think the, the CBD probably has needed a, a bit of love so hopefully this, this project or this design will help um, bring that about. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Port Perry Council has started a new maintenance program aimed at improving efficiency when fixing trees. The infrastructure director is hoping the plans will help brighten up local streets across the city. A tree trimming program set to transform the town. 
rather than zigzag all over the council region responding to custom requests, which has been the usual practice for the last few years, um, we've now divided the Port Perry Regional Council area into 12 zones. Port Perry Council is inundated with trimming, removal and planting requests every week. This dedicated crew will work a three-day roster to meet demand in a bid to cut waiting times. Two weeks, um, probably maximum, uh, assuming that it's an easy tree trimming request, that your, your request would be um, actioned. Council is also working on revitalising damaged plants. These trees along Wandira Road were targeted by vandals just a few weeks ago, with the team working on bringing those plants back to life but unfortunately the size of the tree that we do uh, put in it does take time for them to grow um, so all we can do really is monitor those. It may sound like a minor project but council says the whole community benefits from a green city. Lots of research done worldwide on the cooling effect of trees and um, what that can do for our communities. More information can be found on council's website. Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Stay with us, we'll check the region's fuel prices and plans for the Southern Flinders Bike Trail take a major step forward. A world-class mountain bike trail proposed for Mount Remarkable is a step closer to reality, with plans now underway. The bike loop gaining international attention with company World Trail awarded the construction contract. A first for Australia that's set to be the jewel in the Flinders Ranges crown. Leading company World Trail have the task of constructing a new multi-million dollar bike trail. Being designed by um, the people who are the best in Australia to do that and have actually designed mountain bike trails over 20 countries. The Environment Minister eager to get the ball rolling on this joint federal state government initiative. Enhance its reputation as a mountain biking destination around Melrose, Mount Remarkable, Warabara, Talawi, Alligator Gorge, all those areas. This whole project is full of partnerships coming on. So the Nukunu are part of this, all the three councils, RDA. RDA York Midnor staff are working with local tourism operators to help them reap the benefits from this upcoming development which has been successful with both Commonwealth and State Government. Um, we're leading a, a branding process to look at how we market the new developments and also making sure that the design concepts are world class in that space. It's full steam ahead with construction on the trail expected to begin in coming weeks. Uh, it should be done in the next 12 months or so. So we've got uh, workers from that organisation heading up to Melrose today uh, and uh, spending some time this week there Shari Hams, 7 Spencer Golf News. Broken Hills Local Cricket League is no longer worrying about where games will be played for the upcoming season. A new artificial wicket is currently being installed at an oval in the city south. Dug out and formed up, now just waiting for the concrete pour. The historic zinc oval getting a new permanent cricket pitch ahead of the 2020-2021 fixture. We'll be laying the synthetic grass, the workers will be laying that grass in the next couple of weeks and uh, should be all right to go for the start of the season. Concerns had been growing around the state of the venue with invading grass affecting the turf pitch. By the end of last season, players had about two-thirds of a regular wicket left to play on. On the odd occasion when it does rain, it's always the first wicket that's out of uh, play because um, it doesn't drain well and uh, doesn't dry out well. With the help of mining company Perillia and a few sponsors, the Barrier District Cricket League will have a modern artificial pitch at the zinc in time for the first round in October. The chairman saying the ground could start hosting junior cricket. Normally play our B grade cricket on that wicket. Uh, It'll open up for women's games as well. So it just gives us a lot more options uh, on a Saturday and a Sunday there. Cricket games will also return to the Jubilee Oval this year after it underwent a multi-million dollar redevelopment. Patrick Reinke, 7 Spencer Golf News. Time now to see how things are shaping up when we head to the local petrol pump. Here's Patrick Reinke with this week's Fuel Watch. The first week of September has delivered mixed results at our local Bowsers. 
Starting with unleaded and every spot has seen movement in the last seven days. Some changes, however, are minor. Port Lincoln is still paying around $1.18. The most expensive Spencer Gulf city is Port Augusta, which continues to fork out $1.22 a litre. Wyala has had a good start to spring, falling from $1.23 to $1.17. That's a change of about six cents. Port Piri is down to $1.16. Kadena around the same after seeing a little bit of an increase. Here in Broken Hill, Prices are on the way up, the price averaging 124. Adelaide getting toward the end of its cycle, tumbling from 137 to $1.08. Expect that price to rise again soon. Turning over to diesel now, and it's another batch of mixed results. Port Lincoln holding steady at 117. Port Piri also sitting on that price as well. Wyala drivers witnessing another good drop in its average. A three cent decline has the price at 118. The same as Port Augusta and Kadena. Broken Hill is on the way up, increasing by a cent to $1.27. Adelaide motorists are paying the cheapest of any place as a two cent change sees the SA Capital on 113. Finishing off with a quick look at auto gas, Port Lincoln is up to 92 cents a litre, while a skyrocketing by 10 cents to a dollar. Port Piri has seen some green, Port Augusta and Kadena are on 89, Broken Hill 83, and Adelaide on a cheap 72. Now remember that these prices are the regional averages and they do not reflect any one particular outlet and if you do find a spot that does sell unleaded auto gas or diesel for cheaper be sure to let us know on our facebook page stay with us after the break i'll have the day's finance news and brit will have the latest weather forecast Hello again, time for a check of Wednesday Finance. It was a mostly red day on the share market. Santos dropped by more than 5%, Bendigo Bank and Cube down by more than 2%. Clean Seas and Adelaide Brighton a few of today's bright spots, with both companies up. Local miner Centrex Metals ended the day steady. And the ASX 200 and all odds endured difficult days. Both markets ended trading day down by more than 2%. To the weather, and it's looking like a warm and sunny day tomorrow across the region. With all the latest details, here's Britt. That's right, John, and I'll have more on tomorrow's weather in just a moment. But first, let's take a look at today. 25 degrees was the region's high recorded at both Port Augusta and Port Piri this afternoon, and it reached 24 degrees at Woodna. Taking a lap of the map, 21 degrees was the high at Wyala today. It reached 20 degrees in Adelaide, 18 at Broken Hill and Coffin Bay, and 17 degrees at Port Lincoln, Kadena, Cleve and Clare. From the satellite, we can see a band of cloud crossing South Australia today, with a low pressure trough bringing the occasional shower to the east. Further north, clearer skies with a drier air mass and high pressure. So that was today. Let's take a look at tomorrow. Southeasterly winds about the Gulf waters at 10 to 15 knots, but reaching up to 20 knots in the west until late morning. Seas up to one and a half metres. South to southwesterly swells at up to two metres in southern waters. And it's looking to be mostly sunny at Port Lincoln tomorrow with a top of 20 degrees. A bit warmer at Cleve, sunny and 28. Woodna also sunny with a top of 31 degrees. Wyala sunny tomorrow with a high of 26. Port Augusta warm and sunny with a top of 30 degrees. Kadena sunny and 24. Sunny at Port Pirie also with a top of 27 degrees tomorrow. Clare sunny and 22. Broken Hill sunny and 23. And those warmer temperatures are set to continue into Friday with sunny conditions about the Flinders and Broken Hill districts, partly cloudy elsewhere. Woodna with an expected top of 34 degrees, a high of 33 for Port Augusta, Wyala and Port Piri both 30, Kadena 27, Broken Hill 25 and a top of 23 degrees for Port Lincoln. Saturday, showers across much of the region but remaining dry to the north. Still warm at Port Augusta with a forecast top of 31. A top of 21 for Kadena, Port Lincoln 17. And Sunday is looking fine and partly cloudy across the board with maximum temperatures in the late teens and early 20s. Broken Hill 23, a top of 19 for Port Piri, Wyala 17. And John, that's it from me. Back to you. Thanks, Brett. And that's your local news this Wednesday evening. Thanks for joining us. I'll have updates later. And we'll be back tomorrow night at the earlier time of 6.30. Until then, enjoy your evening. Good night.